Welcome back to the channel. Today we're looking at number three out of four different Anchorman pieces we're doing, and this time we're gonna be taking a close look at the character, Champ Kind. Let's get into it. Now as we get into this one, uh, let's just take a moment here and think again just of the movie that's coming from here, Anchorman. The actor, uh, if I'm gonna say this right, I, David Koechner, I think is how it's pronounced, um, played this uh, character of uh, Champ Kind, but he doesn't get a whole lot of camera time in the movie. So when we're drawing the caricature here, it, it can be a little bit difficult to kind of determine what it is that we're gonna exaggerate or what it is that we're gonna be taking a look at to try to get that likeness. Um, it's not that you can't find reference. There's plenty of photographs out there, plenty of movie footage, but again, he just doesn't get a lot of camera time. And for the most part, we might even say that this character is a bit one dimensional. Now, that doesn't mean we can't find a caricature. And, and this is what I did with this one, it was a little bit different. Um, instead of going back and watching the movie, Again, I, what I decided to do was just kind of take a moment and think about what I remembered of him without going back and looking for reference right away. And in thinking of memories of him, the first thing that pops into my head is just the unusual shape that his mouth takes anytime he's trying to deliver some sort of a punchline. And so that's the first thing I focused on when it came to trying to grab the likeness is making sure that I got that mouth right. And what David Koechner champ kind if you will does is that his jawline kind of shifts to the side a little bit and his mouth gets almost like an elvis type little snarl to it or curl to it uh when he delivers punchlines. and this this is something that he repeats over and over again to the point that i'm not even sure that he knows that he does it because i've seen him do it in different characters that he plays in other you know movies and tv shows like uh in the office for instance he he's uh got a recurring role in the office where every time he delivers some sort of a uh, off-color punchline, again that that mouth kind of curls up in that little weird weird little snarl his jaw shifts to the side and this became the thing that that, that really kind of helped me capture the likeness if you notice here, I, I made a couple different versions of the sketch on the, on the uh, face there, but what I was focused on more than anything else is trying to get that mouth right. And once I figured that mouth out, the rest of it really kind of came very easily, or at least I began to see the character that I was looking for once I had that mouth in place. So as you notice, as I'm getting into the uh, second stage of the sketch here, I've got my head pretty much laid out the way I wanted got the cowboy hat roughly uh, kind of sketched in, and then I'm just lowering the opacity on that layer so I can get an idea of what I want to do with the body. I didn't really have any specific composition in mind at this point, but again, if I go back to this idea of who is this character and what would he ordinarily be doing if he's got some sort of a punchline he's trying to tell, well, you know, the idea of him being in a bar with a beer in hand, again, just very, very much suits who this individual is. He's the guy that claims to be the guy that wants to always have fun and stuff like that, and then usually involves having, you know, liquor in his hand. Now, um, when I'm drawing things like, like an element that can kind of be wrapped up in its own layer, like this hand in this bottle, I tend to draw them kind of off to the side of the moving them into place with the rest of the composition once I'm satisfied with what that line drawing looks like. And so I've developed this in a couple different layers, tr creating a couple different elements. So the head is on its own layer, the main body and torso uh, with the arm that's resting on the uh, bar there is its own layer, and then the hand uh, holding the bottle is a layer, and the bottle itself is its own layer as well. Now the reason that the uh, hand holding the bottle is on the one is on a different layer from the bottle itself is so that way you can try to create some sort of a sense of accuracy with that bottle when i go in to go paint and get in color rendering a little bit later having that bottle on its own layer allows me to get some sense of three-dimensionality and get the shadows right and everything like that and then when the hand kind of comes in over top of it as its own layer, um, I don't have to worry about, you know, whether or not, you know, the label looks right underneath of a finger or anything like that. It just kind of rests naturally over top of it and gives it a little extra sense of depth. Um, I'll explore it a little bit more when we get into the coloring section a little bit later on. For right now, you can notice here uh, what we're doing is working on line work here. And um, it might be handy to point out the uh, arm that's resting on the bar there. Initially, when I kind of laid out some of the rough sketch there, I had a little bit more of the arm kind of uh, laying at a different angle, and, and it just wasn't working uh, from a perspective standpoint, so I had to make some shifts to it. And if you notice, the uh, solution there was to kind of draw it so that the rear portion of the upper arm was facing a little bit more towards camera. That way, it looked like the arm was going to be able, or at least the lower arm was going to be able to turn away from camera and the hand go off into the distance towards the background a little bit more and create just a little bit more of a natural pose there than, than what I had before. Now because of that a couple things shift around so because his body is turned and, and um, you know, the shoulders have to be in perspective and one of the lapels of the jackets is a little bit higher than the other so it may not necessarily look right currently but once we start getting shadows in and create some sense of depth all that will kind of lay the way it's supposed to and hopefully make it look a little bit more realistic. 
Now, one of the things we are going to be talking about here as we go through the uh, color rendering is the line work. Um, in, in a lot of the pieces that I do, I, I make a decision here as to whether I'm going to show line work or if I want to try to make some sort of an attempt to hide it. Now, hiding line work is uh, something that you'll see a lot of videos on on YouTube, and there's a lot of different methods of doing it. I'm going to take a little bit of time a little bit later on just to talk about my method of doing it. It might be something that works for you. You might find a different way that works better for you. But I kind of like the way that it works with my pieces, mostly because I'm such a line work junkie. I, I want my line work. I don't want to completely hide and get rid of it totally. Uh, there are elements where I wanted to help define, you know, a, a certain piece of form or something like that. So um, as I'm going through here, what I'm doing is I have a, a line work that's kind of set on its own layer, and then I put it in an auto lock. That way, you know, nothing uh, can be done to that layer accidentally. I can't accidentally draw a new line in it. I can't accidentally erase a line in it either, as long as it's on auto lock. But the beauty of auto lock is that it does allow you to take whatever those pixels are, for instance, the line work, and just change the color of it. And you can change the color as much as you want. You can change the shade, saturation, opacity, anything you want, but you can't change the line work itself. So if I just go and color over top of it, I can change the color, but the line work will stay intact and locked in place. And that's going to be a handy thing, because what I can do at that point is decide that if I want to hide my line work, the easiest way to do it, and again, this is just a method I use, is that I'll duplicate the line work layer, and then I will kind of hide that layer, just as kind of a backup plan in case anything goes wrong. Then the duplicated layer is the one that I have on auto lock, and what I'll do is just take that duplicated line work on auto lock and color over top of it, just trying to match whatever edge it's bumping up against in terms of the color rendering. So for means of example, you're gonna start seeing this happen in the face more than anywhere else. I kind of do this a little bit at a time as we go through the piece. But as I'm starting to lay in some of the final um, uh, shadows and the, uh, and the uh, light sources on the face, it comes time to try to hide some of that line work around the lip area, the chin, but I still want some definition in there as well. So notice what's happening right now. I'm basically color picking the uh, color of the shadow at the bottom part of his chin, and I'm using that to color over top of the locked line work to get that in a different color. Now, it's not quite the same shade. I've actually darkened it just a little bit, just so it stands out a little bit, and so I have a little, little bit of line work in there, but it's not that big, bold black line work that we're used to seeing in like comic book type work or even some of the other pieces that I've published in the past. You can see the same thing is happening to Hat right now as well. The beauty of the line work here is that the line work actually helps me kind of create something of an edge on the brim of the hat as well. So I don't necessarily go for a complete color match here. I'm actually going a little bit lighter as if the light is bouncing off the, the edge of the brim of the hat. And uh, as I put in like a little bit more light source, I'm kind of going back and forth between, you know, uh, kind of coloring and shadowing, uh, putting in shadows in the main form areas, and then going back and recoloring the line work to kind of adjust and match up to that rendering that I've just done. So you'll see the same thing happen with the bottle right now. I'm deciding and I'm lingering in some color to get a sense of shadow, light, where light's going to bounce, uh, whether or not the bottle is, you know, uh, translucent a little bit and so on and so forth. But once I made some decisions there and, and kind of decided on, on what that final rendering is going to be, then it comes time to address the line work and color pick off the edge and use that to hide it a little bit. But again, I, I might even change the shade just slightly just to give it a little bit more sense of depth and form. The same thing is going to now be repeated on the hand holding the bottle. Notice again, I've changed the color of the line work here, but it was just a little bit too much of a blend, and so I went a little bit darker. Um, and what I did there is basically just color pick the flesh tone and then made it a little bit darker and a little bit more red as well, and then used that to kind of get a little bit darker color in there for the line work. The same thing is going to be repeated on the torso, so I won't bore you with the details on it, other than to say that the beauty of kind of doing this Champ Kind piece is that it was a little bit of a departure from the other Anchorman pieces in the past because the clothes that he's wearing. Champ was, for some reason, a character that was a little bit more modest in his dress and didn't really get into these polka dots and stripes and all these other things that I had to do with some of the other characters. Now, having said that, there is one more to come. We still have the Paul Rudd character to do. And uh, I got some ideas as to how I want to put him in some clothes as well. He's going to be a little bit more unusual than the rest as well. Uh, but I think uh, ultimately one of the great things, again, about Champ was that, that drawing his outfit here was relatively simple. Uh, he was wearing some sort of a, a tan-colored jacket, orange tie, relatively white shirt to match the hat, and all that just made uh, uh, that lack of detail work was uh, kind of a, a welcome breath of fresh air, so to speak, when it came to all the little minuscule line work I was doing in ties up until this point. Now, um, again, there's not really much else to say about this, so I am going to kind of cut the commentary off a little bit early and let you enjoy a little bit of music. But before I do, time for my shameless plug. 
please take a minute here, click on that subscribe button. It helps out quite a bit. And then make sure that I understand that, that I do have an audience out there that's that's really kind of in, you know encouraged by what I'm doing. Uh, if you have any comments to leave as well or suggestions, that helps out as well. I've got a bunch of videos that I want to make in the future. I want to make sure that I'm keeping them topical and I can speak to the things that you're interested in hearing about. And last but not least, don't forget that like button. Smashing that like button helps make sure that we get you know my videos in rotation. We can get it and kind of grow the audience a little bit, so I have a better understanding of what the audience wants and you know what it is that I can do for you in terms of these videos. Especially if you're looking for more tutorials. If you have questions about something you'd like to learn about, I'm more than happy to speak to it. Just put again, put something in the comments and let me know what you need, and I'm, I'm more than happy to uh, accommodate as far as that's concerned. So, that being said, uh, just take a look here. I'm going to kind of finish up the light source. Uh, I will get in a little bit of a shadow, but don't forget to stay tuned to the end. I got a little bit of a punchline coming at the end here. Something that uh, uh, Champ Kind definitely says in the movie. It's actually my favorite line from the movie. Uh, you don't want to miss it. So, again, stay tuned. Hopefully, you stick around to the end. And in the meantime, make sure you stop back. Remember, I got number four of four of these videos coming pretty soon. Take care.